Hi, I'm Jason Camp Perspective, and we're going to be going over the functions um, and it's a little bit of a tutorial for the Doctor 280C system. Uh, this is meant for a 35 pound dog and under. It's like if you have like a 10 to 15 pound Chihuahua, 20 to 25 ish pound Shih Tzu. Uh, this is typically the collar that we're going to be working with. Um, if it's a smaller dog, like a five or eight pound dog, there is the IQ Plus or the IQ Mini. Uh, not a big fan of those collars, uh, just because it's a, a dial uh, where you guess what the number is, as opposed to the 280C, which is the smaller, smallest co collar that Doctor has that has a LED light up screen. So you can, and you also get exact numbering. So not only can you see things at night, you also get like exact numbers like 22, 23, Whereas on the IQ Plus or Mini, you know, you're kind of guessing and you're, you're, you're not getting um, set numbers. So that's why I like this model for, for even the smaller dogs. But this, um, the IQ Mini is a much smaller, or not much, but smaller collar um, than the 280C. So it makes it better for the, the really small dogs. So this is a fully waterproof system, uh, both the receiver and the transmitter, meaning the, rem uh, the collar and the remote. Uh, so the dog can be swimming with the collar on and everything's going to be fine. And you could have the remote, you could be out in the rain or even, you know, hanging out in the pool or something and, you know, little dips in the water and all that stuff, not a problem. So um, when being recommended your training collar, uh, if you happen to have a smaller dog, but the trainer recommends like a dog to 2300 or something like that, which is meant for a larger dog, um, the reasoning is because we need more output in anticipation of struggling or having issues with, uh, with um, a dog that has behavior problems, okay? So if you have like a reactive Shih Tzu uh, and the trainer's like, okay, we're gonna put you in a dog to 2300, if you do your research, you're probably gonna find that this is the collar you'd want for that Shih Tzu, but you have to account for the fact that the dog is also reactive, okay? So when we give recommendations for certain collars for certain size dogs, we take all those things into account um, this really only accounts for um, uh, kind of like the, 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 the norm, the, your, your kind of dogs with no issues, um, dogs that respond well to pressure. There are a lot of variables that come into training when we're dealing with remote collar. So just make sure that if your trainer has recommended a collar for you, that you are getting the collar that was recommended to you. Uh, we have had clients in the past who were recommended one collar, did their research, bought a different collar going by the stats, which so it's not technically incorrect. But then when we started the training, it wouldn't work because it wasn't appropriate to their dog's behaviors. It wasn't appropriate to their dog's uh, physical resilience, the length of their hair, the thickness of their coat. There's a lot of variables, variables that come into play. So do get the collar that your trainer has recommended to you, okay? So this, uh, like I said, meant for 35 pound dog and under. Um, backup backlight LED screen. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and go over all the, the, the buttons and the, the functions. Alrighty, so here we have the box. Uh, it has a Doctor 280C manual, which goes over all the functions. Uh, we have the remote or the transmitter. We have the collar, of course. A power supply for both the receiver and the transmitter. And then we have a bag that has a um, clip for your remote, so you can clip it onto your belt, and then it has this tester that allows you to test for any current in case you're having any issues with your particular collar. So we'll go over this later, but it helps you check to see that your collar is actively working in case things, in case you find over time it stops working. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. All right, so on the remote, we have a number of buttons. On the side, there's a blue button. That's the on and off uh, for the remote itself, as well as the uh, blue light screen, okay? On the front above, so this is the screen. This is just decoration. This gray button up here, it says pager. This is a vibration function, okay? It just vibrates the collar, nothing else. On the side, we have two buttons. We have one with bumps on it, if you can see, in the shape of an N for the NIC function, okay? And on the bottom, we have a smooth button, which is for continuous. So with NIC, even if I hold that button down, after I press it, nothing's gonna happen. With continuous, as long as I hold that, that button down, stimulation is gonna be transmitted to the collar, okay? So you have NIC and continuous. Uh, on top, we have a dial that goes clockwise and counterclockwise. 
uh, clockwise goes up, counterclockwise goes down. And this goes in increments of one. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to 127 and all the way back down to zero. Okay, so it's a very nice smooth transition when going uh, from low to high. <clears throat> On the back, there's a tab here and a red dot. So the tab is where you would connect your um, uh, charger to charge it. And this is also where you wanna make sure that it's completely closed. If you're gonna be around water or in the rain or anything like that, you wanna make sure that this is closed. This here is just a magnet that helps turn on the collar, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. This is the collar itself. Uh, these probes do not come standard with the uh, system itself. They're actually smaller. These are meant for a thicker coated dog that we were working with before. Uh, and then this also has a red light, as you can see here, uh, which was, uh, this is turned on, turn that off. Um, uh, this has a red dot here. Uh, that we use to turn the collar on and off, okay? So to turn on the system for your remote, you're simply going to go against the blue button. You're gonna press and hold that. It's gonna turn this on, okay? You can see how it lit up. Uh, and then we're gonna take our remote and take the red dot, look for the red dot here. We're gonna touch those together, together and there's gonna be a green light here. There's our green light. So now the system is on. I wanna check that it's on. So I'm gonna hit this front button, which is pager and it's just a vibration, okay? So as long as I hold that pager function down, it's vibrating the collar. So I always suggest to my clients when they turn the collar on and when they turn it off, that they always hit the pager function to double check that it actually is on and or off, okay? The reason for that is, is if we go to turn off the system, I'm gonna touch the two red dots together, you're gonna see a red light here, okay? So red light, but the collar is still on. Let's try that again. Red light, but the collar is still on, okay? Because when you touch the two red dots, when you turn it off, you have to hold for a moment, and then it's now officially off, okay? So uh, before, clients would complain that the collar would die, and then it, I would find out that they were actually accidentally leaving the collar on. So they would be in a rush in the morning, they would touch the dots together, they would see the red light, they would not do the vibration function and leave the collar on all day. Um, uh, so then the collar would die. And then what can happen is because they think their collar is on, when they come home to walk their dog, they go like this again to turn the collar on, but really they're turning the collar off because um, it was on from the morning, okay? So I like to do that vibration function to double check that it's both on and off. If you're training with your dog and um, you're like at 80 out of 127 and that seems out the norm, I always like to grab the collar, hit the vibration function, double check that the collar is actually working. Uh, if it didn't work, maybe the collar died, maybe I forgot to put it on, uh, blah, blah, I mean, uh, or turn it on, uh, you know, any one of those things. So here, uh, one more time, we get the red dot, red dot, green light, hit that vibration function, okay? When we turn our collar or our remote here on and off, when you press and hold, you have to hold for a good about three seconds or so before the system actually turns off, okay? So if I press hold again, turn that collar on, is this blue light here is gonna go away on its own, it's not on. But what's nice about it is once you have that feature turned on, if you turn the dial here, it turns the light back on again, okay? So then let's say it's at it's nighttime, you can't see what your remote is set to. You can also hit the blue button, the on and off button very quickly, and it'll turn it on. See that? But if I press and hold, turns it off. Okay, press and hold, turns it on. Quick tap, turns it off. Quick tap, turns it on. Okay, so uh, you, you're able to turn that that light on and off uh, without having to fiddle with your with your gauges because when you turn, when you have the light on, when you turn the actual collar or the the levels, or you start to change the levels it will turn on the blue light of the remote itself, okay? So, um, when it comes to adjusting the levels, there is a dial, as I said, on top. So here, if we take that dial, you see clockwise is going up on the collar and it goes all the way up to 127 max, and then counterclockwise brings it down. You can also notice that there is a battery life signal here, right there on the side of the number. 
that battery signal is for your remote, not for your caller, okay? A lot of people look at that and they go, oh, I have a fully charged system. These are on two different batteries. Um, here, green light, fully charged, orange light running low, red light charge me now, okay? This also has a green, orange, and red light, but the clearest indicator, of course, is your actual battery life signal. This is a two hour quick charge system. So uh, if you run out of battery and you put it on for 15, 20 minutes, it should give you enough juice to go out and walk your dog real quick, uh, but it would need a full two hours in order to fully charge 100%. Um, it's half mile range, fully waterproof system. And same thing here, we have the charging tabs on the back here. So if I open that here, so I'll plug in my charger and then you just want to make sure that, that charger is closed so that no water gets in there if your dog is swimming or something, okay? If your dog does happen to get wet while we're in the collar, uh, we do suggest that you rotate the collar every 30 minutes to an hour um, to prevent a hot spot from developing. Uh, what, what can happen is with the moisture and then the collar and the body heat is it creates this kind of warm, moist environment which can then turn into a hot spot. Uh, so rotating every half an hour to an hour just helps prevent that from happening. If your dog is in a completely dry environment or inside the home or something like that, uh, you can rotate the collar every hour and a half to two hours, okay? If you leave it on too long in the same spot, what can happen is uh, the dog will develop pressure sores from two things, poking against the neck for a long period of time, okay? Uh, typically, like the, you'll see um, it'll scab over and the fur will fall out. The fur will grow back, the scab will go away, it'll heal up. It's not a permanent thing or anything like that. Um, simply a pressure sore, but then you want to make sure that you avoid that area should that ever happen. Uh, hot spots, depending on when you catch it, if it's left on for too long and there's too much moisture and bacteria got in there, uh, potentially may need antibiotics. So that's why we recommend rotating every half an hour to an hour. And all, you can always go base of the neck too to give your dog uh, uh, more time uh, in between the rotations, okay? So now, We're going to test out uh, the connection here. So I'm gonna take my tester tool. And I believe this comes with every collar above the IQ um, model, but possibly even the IQs may have it as well. So I'm gonna turn the light off to make this easier. I'm gonna take the connector and connect it on the two probes there, okay? And, oops. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up. So it's at max power to help give a bigger dis uh, display. So if I hit Nick, you can see that big, that flash, okay? So this means everything is working just fine. So if one day your collar wasn't working and you didn't get, in, you didn't feel anything here, it's, it's vibrating, but you don't feel anything on your hand when you put it against your hand to, to test it or anything like that, you can use your tester tool and that tells you that there's still contact. So there's, there's some kind of issue going on, right? That's not based upon the connection or the, the current. It's most likely just bad connection with the dog's neck or your skin. If we do continuous, as long as I hold that button down, you can see that the light is going off and then when I let the button go, it stops. So with Nick, if I press and hold, nothing happens after the initial stimulation. With continuous, for up to 12 seconds, as long as I hold that button down, uh, the stimulation is gonna be delivered to the dog's neck, okay? Now we train 99.99% of our dogs on Nick. Um, not to say uh, that we don't ever train a dog on continuous, right? but most dogs are gonna be on the neck. So you saw how I was holding it down and at a certain point, the uh, system itself turned off without me removing my thumb. It's because this does have a, uh, a, uh, a default off, I believe at about 12 seconds. So I'm still holding and now it turns off um, automatically, okay? So you can't have that continuously going. There is an automatic shut off and I think it caps at 12 seconds, okay? So with the neck function, even if I hold it, that's all that's gonna happen with continuous. As long as I hold it down, I'm gonna be I'm going to be delivering stimulation to the dog. Okay. Now even if I quick tap the the, the continuous versus the neck, you can see the difference. 
in how it's being delivered. So even a quick tap on the continuous function will have a quick, or well not quick, but will have a longer burst than the actual NIC itself, okay? So that's what this tool is for. It helps you to check if the collar is still uh, working correctly. And then if we take this tool and we're trying to ch check connection or what have you, I like to put it against the fatty part of my palm here, like this. I'm gonna go to 15. I can feel stim already, very subtle, but it's, it's so subtle that's not moving my thumb, so I'm gonna increase the, the level of the pressure. There we go, so that's 24. Okay, so you see the twitch in my thumb? There it is. How, that's uh, involuntary, okay? That is all because of the uh, stimulation here, okay? So again, with the NIC function, as long as I hold my uh, finger down, you can see how my thumb is contracted. I can feel stimulation as soon as I let it go. My thumb relaxes. With the NIC function, you say, see that initial twitch there? Continuous, twitch, continuous, twitch, okay? So it's just a muscle contraction. Again, there's no electricity running through my body or anything like that. Uh, so they use this technology on humans all the time. So that is the basic tutorial for a Dogtra 280C system. Uh, remember, you do get a manual that comes with your system. We always suggest that our clients read that manual prior, in addition to um, watching these videos um, no need to do anything with your dog yet unless you're working with a professional trainer. Um, you'll want to wait for either us and or your trainer to um, work with you. But this is a nice kind of introduction to how everything works uh, to get you ready for your lesson. I'm Jesse with Canine Perspective. Thank you for watching.